Look who it is. I'm aware of your propensity for violence. Halcyon is a bloodier place because of you. The OSI teaches that everything in the universe happens according to the grand plan. But the stranger that arrived in Halcyon was an unplanned variable. From the moment he landed in Emerald Vale, his actions altered the course of history. The events on Tartarus brought about the end of the board's authority. But the board's mistakes would haunt the colony for decades to come. The damage they left behind would require the work of a generation to repair. Dr. Phineas Wells began reviving a handful of the Hope's colonists. Engineers, scientists, technicians, and intellectuals. They were among the brightest minds the Earth had ever sent out into the stars. The Hope scientists and engineers woke up in a colony descending headlong into total collapse. With no way to return to Earth, they had no choice but to band together and devote themselves to the cause of saving Halcyon. The people of Halcyon were nothing if not hardy. In the absence of the board's authority, many of the colony's settlements banded together with a single purpose in mind, survival. Life was especially hard in the years to come. Some towns dissolved by attrition and starvation, but most of them found a way to carry on. In the years to come, Halcyon was forced to reckon with its newfound freedom. The board was gone, and for better or worse, the colony was responsible for its own destiny. Left leaderless, the people of Stellar Bay and Amber Heights were slowly but inevitably picked apart by the wildlife of Monarch. Left unchecked, the war on Monarch consumed both MSI and the Iconoclasts. And when the sulfur cloud settled, only stragglers from both factions remained. Some found their way to Sublight, some to Terra too, and some lived their final years fighting for food in the wilderness. In the end, only the beasts remained. Without Lilia Hagen, Sublight Salvage fell apart. The company fractured, devolving into a series of unregulated criminal gangs, fences, and smugglers. Their facade of legitimacy quickly faded. In time, the Sublight family was forgotten. Over the years, the ruins of Edgewater caused irreversible environmental damage to the landscape of Emerald Vale, owing largely to the presence of toxic compounds in the town's building materials. As for Edgewater's former workers, their remains provided a source of nourishment for the region's fauna leading to an explosion in the Spratt population. The collapse of Edgewater left its workers bereft of any purpose in life. Most of them made their way to Adelaide McDevitt's camp, hoping to ingratiate themselves into her favor. Adelaide accepted only a few to her community. The rest were turned away and likely died of starvation. Nevertheless, Adelaide's camp grew into a well-established town. Adelaide McDevitt refused to cooperate with the ongoing effort to save Halcyon from collapse. A sympathetic deserter stole a copy of her research and delivered it to the Hope's scientists. It is unclear how useful Adelaide's research was. An optimistic estimate suggests her work may have bought Halcyon another few years of survival. Adelaide would never know. She died that winter. The loss of Junle Tennyson hit the groundbreaker hard and even threatened to undercut the ship's independence. Taking up the example of their fallen captain, citizens banded together and rallied anew for the groundbreaker's autonomy. Junle was remembered as a folk hero, the spark that ignited a flame, heralding a new age of proud defiance against anyone who would challenge the Groundbreaker's sovereignty. The rediscovery of the hope and the abandonment of the lifetime employment program 
forced Byzantium to come to terms with some uncomfortable realities about the state of Halcyon. While Byzantines were reluctant to surrender the luxuries they'd grown accustomed to, the board's diminished authority gave them little choice in the matter. Nearly everyone had to learn to make do with less. Some even had to get jobs. It was a dark time indeed. Even the Gorgon asteroid, though a distant enigma to most of Halcyon, felt the aftershocks of your actions. The Gorgon Project created divisions among Wells' newly awakened scientists. Many wanted to let the facility and its failures rot, but others saw an opportunity to improve the work of the original scientists and, perhaps, the lives of Halcyon's masses. With no one to champion the project, however, the promise of Adrena time faded, and the Gorgon facilities fell into disuse once more. Lucian Bancroft had high hopes for Project Gorgon. However, the board's fall stripped him of the power and authority he'd wielded for so long. Like many of his peers, he was forced to take up a job based on his meager qualifications. He was relegated to dirt farming in the marauder-infested outskirts of Terra too. In spite of everything, the Gorgon asteroid remained a sobering reminder of the potential for progress and disaster in humanity's most ambitious efforts. The Rizzo's company in Halcyon dissolved after the collapse of the board. The Eridanos atmospheric complex developed a notorious reputation as a derelict settlement populated by grinning killers. These stories kept the infection safely contained until a group of salvagers braved the complex and stole 20 crates of Spectrum Brown. Inside these crates, long dormant parasites began to stir. In the absence of board regulation, Spectrum Brown made its way across the colony by passing hands between the desperate, the apathetic, and the lonely. A few settlements tried and failed to ban Spectrum Brown. The drink became a dangerous escape for anyone who dreamed of happier days. Before his untimely death, Captain Alex Hawthorne had plans to restore and modify, for combat purposes, a sanitation and maintenance auto-mechanical that he'd found in a state of disrepair in Emerald Vale's scrapyard. That unit remains broken down and forgotten in the unreliable supply closet to this day. As for Dr. Phineas Wells, he spent his remaining years in his orbital lab Though he was always haunted by the failures of his past, he was determined to make things right by building toward the future. Dr. Wells was able to revive many more scientists and engineers than he first expected, thanks to the additional batch of chemicals you stole from the Ministry. Wells never forgot about the human lives that were lost in acquiring these chemicals. The revival project was hard and painful work, but in the end, Despite limited resources, over half the Hope's colonists were successfully revived. Even after Wells passed away, the Hope's scientists and engineers worked night and day to pull Halcyon from the brink of collapse. Their efforts continue to this day, which may be reason enough for optimism. Dr. Wells laid the groundwork for the project to save the colony, but he would never live to see the fruits of his labor. He passed away a few years later. His work was carried on by the scientists and engineers he revived. Life will never be the same in Halcyon. It is widely agreed that the colony has a chance of stabilizing within a generation, owing to the hard work and determination of the surviving colonists. Recovery is a distant goal, and the path is long and uncertain. But the people of Halcyon carry on, determined as ever. And what about you, the unplanned variable in the history of Halcyon? You brought an end to the chaos on Tartarus and left Dr. Wells to his own devices. The affairs of the colony never distracted you from living out your own dreams, to captain a ship, to sail the Aether, 
and to earn a reputation as the greatest spacer Halcyon ever had. No one knows what's happened to Earth, and no one knows what the future has in store for Halcyon. All we know for certain is this, the name of the unreliable and that of its intrepid captain will remain the subject of countless stories for years to come.